Hi, I'm Frida Starnes, the Scott County, Virginia Administrator. I'm Bill Dingus, the Assistant County Administrator and Director of Public Works. We're going to talk to you today about a couple of programs that are happening in Scott County that we hope will be informative for the residents of our county. The first thing I would like to talk about is the Scott County Telephone Broadband projects that are going to be happening coming up pretty soon. There's been two major announcements in the last couple of months for Scott County Telephone. Those are totaling $47.8 million. The first one was announced in July in Duffield and that was $22.8 million from the Department of Housing and Community Development, the Virginia Telecommunication Initiative, which will allow broadband access for 95% of the Scott County residents. The latest announcement was last week in Big Stone Gap where another $25 million was announced through the USDA Reconnect program. This will provide coverage for 17,000 residents in Wise, Lee, and the city of Norton. The funds would be great um, for our area because broadband is so important and it would allow our citizens to telework from companies that's not located in our area. Um, it would also allow us to attract employers that are looking to move to Southwest Virginia. Broadband is very important to them so that they can stay connected to the World Wide Web as well. So we're very excited for the Scott County Telephone Cooperative and all their grant money that they have received, um, totaling $47.8 million. And from the announcement last week, it sounds like there's a possibility of another 20 million coming our way, which will be announced soon, hopefully. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, also, there's a project um, that's happening in Norton that you can see if you're traveling to Wise County. Scott County is part of what's called the Regional Industrial Facilities Authority. And that is made up of county administrators and economic development directors from the counties of Scott, Lee, Wise, Dickinson, and the city of Norton. Um, the facility authority, which is called a RIFA, was developed probably about five years ago with those counties. And there is a project called Project Intersection that you see between Norton and Wise as you're traveling on US 23. You'll see now there's a two-story steel structure that's being constructed. That is a 28,000 square, square foot building that is expected to be completed in the spring of 2024 that will house Earthlink. Earthlink will have 285 employees, which is their projection. There are four commercial light industrial building sites on that property. 200 total acres, there's electrical, water and sewer connections, natural gas and broadband already available for those sites and they are being marketed. Over $22 million in federal and state funding has been received for Project Intersection and the RIFA is a revenue sharing entity. So anything that happens with a RIFA project, Scott County will receive a share of that revenue as well as the other localities involved in the RIFA. Uh, last week we also had an announcement at a project um, location in Norton that was called Project Thoroughbred and the RIFA received two and a half million dollars in funds from the Virginia Department of Energy through their abandoned mine land economic revitalization project, AMLR as short, for a facility um, that will do grain processing, storage and a distribution terminal. That facility will allow local farmers to expand their growing season and bring in more revenue. Specialty grains sell at a rate of 30% more per bushel than feed quality grains. The specialty grains will be sent to the craft beverage market, which is a growing industry in Southwest Virginia. Mountain Empire Community College has also created a workforce program that will allow students to do internships at the terminal and receive a grains certification so they would be able to continue their career as more grains are grown to meet the demand. Scott County also has a new website that has been uh, probably online since the spring. And I would like to just put some um, bullet points out there for the residents so that they can uh, learn to navigate the website. It's really for you and for your benefit. Um, there is a section at the very top called Residence, and once you click into that section, you'll see um, some different things that I want to point out are important to you. There's an alert section 
that will allow you to sign up to receive announcements of important information. So once you sign up for the alerts, if we have a nat natural disaster or some other event in the county um, that is a red alert, you would receive that notification and on our homepage of the website, that would be a big red bullet point at the very top of the homepage. Also, we do a lot of parks and recreation activities in the county. Um, there is a section there where you can sign up for sports leagues. Um, we have several youth programs. Basketball and volleyball are very uh, popular with our residents. And we have some summer programs for tennis and golf that also have um, a lot of um, students participate in those as well in the summer. So you can check out the Parks and Rec page and sign up online for those youth leagues. Also, there's a tab for the Board of Supervisors. It provides their phone number and their email information if you have an issue that you would like to talk to your supervisor that's in your district about. And one of the most important things um, that we hear the most is uh, VDOT report a problem. So we have a link in that resident section where you can click into VDOT report a problem. You put in your information, um, explain what the problem is, and that puts it in the VDOT queue for them to take a look at to repair or fix. Also, there is a, I call them colons, they're round sections that are about the middle of the homepage. There's one called Agenda and Minutes. Here you can find the minutes for the Board of Supervisors, the Economic Development Authority, and the Electoral Board. So you're able to click into those and read uh, synopsis of the minutes um, after those meetings each month, if that is something that is of interest to you. There's also a coin called Join Our Team. Uh, we currently have four positions open, and as those are filled or if we have vacant positions, that's where you can check our website for availability of uh, job openings within the county. In the coin that's GIS property information, this one's also got some in good information for our citizens. It has the Scott County interactive map there. It shows your election districts, your EMS and fire response zones, and it'll also have a map that shows the solid waste centers. So our website's very uh, user-friendly and we hope that you will take advantage of using that website and maybe gaining some more information about the county from using it. Thank you. Thank you, Frida, for a lot of information there. Uh, one of the things that uh, affects most of the people in the county and one of the biggest operations we have in public works is the solid waste management. Um, we, uh, of our 7,000 plus households in the county, we produce over 15,000 tons of solid waste that has to be managed uh, annually in our county, which constitutes about $1.8 million in the county budget. Our current operations, um, we employ five uh, CDL truck drivers who operate uh, refuse trucks and visit 14 solid waste centers throughout the county six days a week. Um, that trash that's picked up at the solid waste centers is then either transferred to the transfer station in Midway or taken directly to the EcoSafe landfill in Bluntville, Tennessee. Um, if it goes to the transfer station, it's loaded onto a semi truck and then hauled to the Eco Safe uh, transfer state or uh, landfill in Tennessee, uh, where we have to pay a uh, tipping fee to dispose of it. Um, some of the questions that uh, often come up about the solid waste centers, uh, although we're open from uh, seven o'clock on Monday morning to eight o'clock on Saturday evening, uh, 24 hours time, we get a lot of questions about being closed on Sundays and uh, on certain holidays. Well, the, the primary reason is a logistic reason that the landfill that we haul to in Bluntville is closed on Sundays and those particular holidays. So without anywhere to take that trash, uh, we would uh, bottleneck 
uh, at the transfer station. And the EPA rules uh, dictate that we can't uh, leave it piled up on the uh, transfer floor. So it has to go into the trailer to be hauled away. Uh, and without a place for it to go that particular day, uh, we would uh, uh, accumulate too much trash at the transfer station. So uh, logistically, we have to be closed those days. Um, and personnel wise, uh, if we were open on Sundays and those holidays, our trucks would have to run. Uh, there's not a day that um, we were able to have the sites open and the trucks not run. Uh, we, we've had instances where the trucks may tire up that's on a certain route, and by four o'clock that day, the sites were running over. So uh, I, don't, I don't think a lot of people realize that our trucks are visiting these sites six days a week, every day. Uh, so it's a endless stream of solid waste going out uh, of the county. Another component of uh, public works is the uh, litter pickup along the county highways. Now you may see uh, three different types of crews out on the highway picking up trash. Uh, one may be uh, the uh, regional jails may have a crew out that they're manning. That's usually the blue bus with the guard that you see. Uh, another entity may be the Scott Service Program that uh, we have here in the county that uh, those participants are out picking up trash. Uh, a third uh, a program that we have is assign a highway or someone on probation uh, is put into the program that's uh, administered by our litter control officer and they are assigned a section of highway and it's pretty much do it as you can. Um, a lot of these um, participants don't have their driver's license so they're assigned highways close to the, their uh, house so they can uh, get to it but you will see them out. All of those programs place it in the orange bags. Uh, you see the orange bags along the highway and uh, it is VDOT's responsibility to uh, pick those up. Um, as far as our uh, assign a highway program that's administered by our litter control officer, um, we uh, since the 2015 through uh, 2022, uh, that program uh, picked up 16,773 bags of trash along our highways in the county. Uh, so without that effort, you can imagine what our roads would look, look like. Uh, litter Control also uh, tries to do education programs with our local schools to uh, try to change that litter culture that we see throughout the counties. Another component of uh, public works is animal control. Uh, if you haven't visited the uh, animal shelter in the Daniel Boone area, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, we uh, have a great adoption rate and one of the lowest euthanasia rates uh, in the region, if not in the state. Uh, it's well below 3% most of the time. Uh, you know, it's nothing that we ever want to do, um, but occasionally you might have a dog that's unadoptable or uh, for health reasons is put down, but most of them are sent to rescue or adopted out of the shelter. Uh, we're really proud of our shelter and uh, are thankful uh, to the Scott County Humane Society and their help in managing the shelter. That's it, that's all I got. Okay, what are some of the ongoing challenges facing county government? Some of our challenges that we see most often um, and our citizens <coughs> talk to us the most about are their road issues. Uh, we have um, Virginia Department of Transportation personnel that comes quarterly to our meetings 
So um, our next one will be in November. If you have road issues um, that you would like to talk about, you can contact us anytime, um, 386-6521, or you know, you can come to any of our Board of Supervisors members, you're welcome, or Board of Supervisor meetings, you're welcome to attend, uh, but they will be here in November uh, with the VDOT update, and that would be a good time for you to bring your concerns um, to them in person here in our boardroom at 190 Beach Street, uh, Gate City. But road issues are one of the main things that I see um, as challenges. Um, the cost of maintenance on our Packer trucks, um, as Mr. Dingus mentioned earlier, um, those are just so detailed and intricate of how they operate. They're hard to keep all of them on the road at one time. So sometimes we do get bottlenecked and um, citizens do call and complain, you know, when those sites are closed and we understand their concerns. You know, if you take your trash to the site and it's closed for some reason, it is aggravating and we understand. Um, but truck issues, repairs, everything, just the cost of operation nowadays is astronomical. Um, but you're welcome to attend our meetings anytime. Like I said, if you have a road issue, just reach out and we'll try to help you put in that uh, VDOT report a problem, point you in the right direction to how you can get your concerns addressed. Yeah. Uh, I would like to point out that uh, the, when the sites are open 24 hours a day, um, that it's inevitable that at some time they may fill up and have to close until a truck can come there and uh, empty the site. Um, so uh, there, there's no way to avoid that, them being open all the time because we can't control the trash coming in. And we can't have a truck there all the time. We've got 14 sites throughout this huge county that we're visiting every day. Um, but our transfer station can always take your trash. And um, it's open from eight to four Monday through Saturday. So uh, you can, that's always available, especially if you have large items. Uh, we have uh, the junk boxes at the solid waste centers that you can throw your refrigerator or your couch in but you have to lift it up out of your truck and throw it over into the bin. Where at the transfer station, you can pull your truck or trailer right onto the transfer station floor and slide it right off without having to lift it up over anything. Uh, so I think a lot of people don't realize that and that would be very helpful, not only to the citizens that's trying to get rid of a bulk item, uh, but uh, to, uh, our operations in, uh, just in general because our, our junk boxes are hard to keep up with, uh, people throwing it in. Um, so, you know, if you go to a site and it's empty and it's an emergency that you have to get rid of it, uh, there should be other sites available. Uh, if not, uh, the transfer station uh, would be available. Uh, it's also closed on Sunday in those, those holidays uh, I mentioned. And the five holidays, or six holidays, is New Year's Day, Labor Day, Fourth of July, Memorial Day, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Let's go to your wish list. If you had money that you could spend on a project that you don't have the money right now to spend on, what would that be? As far as waste management, I would like to see compactors installed at each one of the uh, solid waste centers. A uh, compactor would re uh, do away with the need to run these packer trucks that we have a terrible time keeping uh, on the road um, and the, the cost of those packer trucks. Uh, however, there would have to be uh, the implementation of hours, operation hours. Uh, and then we would have the opportunity to either run uh, roll-off trucks, which uh, takes a lot less maintenance uh, to service those, or in the future, uh, give us the opportunity to contract them out if we needed to uh, for that service. Uh, be a much 
cleaner. It, it would uh, control any outside uh, solid waste from outside the county, which is a big problem, uh, especially in our sites that are near the Tennessee line. Uh, it would uh, reduce the uh, amount of non-desirable stuff that uh, goes into the uh, 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 waste stream now that the, our landfill uh, will not take. Uh, it would um, open up uh, the uh, opportunity for more recycling uh, throughout the county. Uh, so that would be one of my top wish lists, although it would be a significant investment for the county. I guess my wish list would be um, the money to develop another site pad at Riverside. Uh, we've had grant money through our Economic Development Authority that oversees that property uh, to do another site pad, but once the bids came in, they were way over the money that we had available and um, millions more. So if we had another site pad developed and had the funds to do that, we would have a better chance of bringing in another industry for Riverside where we would have more jobs available and a new revenue stream for our citizens, uh, maybe for some tax relief if we had more business. Okay, well, thank you both for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for inviting us to um, take the time to explain some county operations and we appreciate it.